Let's bring in Fred Tomzik, former CEO of TD Ameritrade. Uh, Fred, let's get your perspective for the investors at home, really. I mean, after years of really low rates, uh, where investors at home have been really just encouraged to buy stocks, we've got to get reintroduced to fixed income, corporate bonds, munis. What should, as we approach the end of the quarter, people be thinking about in their portfolios when it comes to balance in the face of all this volatility? Uh, well, I mean, I think, you know, if you stand back at the market and just look at where we are and all the uncertainties in front of us, we've got the Fed tightening from ultra-loose monetary policy for a long period of time, including some experimental uh, uh, quantitative easing being a bit experimental. We've never, I've never seen that in my career. So that's number one. Number two uh, is you're coming out of a period um, where, you know, they've got that Fed tightening You've got geopolitical uncertainties with the Russia-Ukraine war. You've got increased tensions with China. And you've got this banking crisis going on, uh, which, you know, and banking does rely on confidence. So you've got all that going on. And on top of that, the Fed's now trying to run two tracks where it's trying to tighten monetary policy to deal with inflation. But it's also trying to loose, provide liquidity to the banking system. All that breeds is uncertainty. And I think for investors right now, they should be fairly cautious. So, Fred, give us the classic mistakes, maybe a couple classic mistakes that investors at home, maybe active traders, would tend to make in an environment like this and how we might guard against those. Well, I mean, it, it's um, to me, it's a news driven market because of what's going on today and, and all this stuff. It's a very news driven market. So unless you can predict what the news is going to be this afternoon or tomorrow, I, I think, you know, as a trader, you should make sure you can limit your risk. Don't start to take outsized positions. We used to say at Ameritrade, always know your downside and be, be willing uh, to make sure you're willing to tolerate that loss. So don't take extreme positions right now. And we can argue that what we've seen play out with the banking sector in recent weeks has really been a crisis of confidence, right? And that in, in itself has triggered these bank runs and led to a crisis of liquidity. Uh, the next shoe to drop, potentially, or I guess the actions are being taken so it doesn't drop, is First Republic Bank. When you see FSOC meeting, when you see Treasury Secretary Yellen testifying, as she did this week, in front of lawmakers and saying what she's saying about, about deposits and the commentary from Powell as well on the heels of the FOMC meeting, does it, does it actually staunch that crisis of confidence? Or, or is there potential for another shoe to drop? Well, I, you know, Banking does rely on confidence, and, and so I can't stress that enough. And any time you have a loss of confidence in, in a bank, it's going to cause uh, potential issues for that bank. So, I mean, I'd like to say where we have been today, at least in the U.S., the two banks that have gone down have had unique situations, so it feels like it's over, but you're never really sure because you don't know the... You used to have a saying that when you have your direct or primary exposure, you have your secondary exposure, and then you have your tertiary exposure, which is much harder to see. And so those things tend to play out over time. So I don't think we know for sure. But it definitely, to me anyway, the two banks that have gone down the U.S. seem to be unique situations that, you know, sort of uh, they had weak ALM. Silicon Valley Bank had weak ALM and interest rate risk management um, and a lot of red flags that they ignored. So hopefully they're isolated. I think they're isolated, but you don't know and we won't know for a while.